going on guys it's steve so this is something that really makes me laugh you know this happens all the time if you guys realize let me see i would say yeah this this historically if you go back and you look at these teams from a historical standpoint you'll notice people always hop on the bandwagon of teams that make no sense to even dare to hop on you know like this first of all the Boston Celtics are extremely overrated. They finished 48 and 34 last year, and now people are saying they're going to be the second seed in the Eastern Conference because they picked up Al Horford? What the hell has this world come to? This <laughs> These are the same people that say the New York Knicks aren't going to make the playoffs. When they, they, they just picked up Derrick Rose and Joe Kim Noah, Courtney Lee and Brandon Jennings, and they already have a superstar in Carmelo Anthony and a young developing star in Christos Porz. This is these are the same people that say these kind of things. And you know, it just gets so ridiculous sometimes. This is how the, this is how the hype machine works. The media will say, Oh, for example, Oh, the Boston Celtics, look how good they are. For primarily it's someone from Boston. They'll say, Look how good they are. Look, they pick we picked up Al Horford. Someone else will say, Oh, look, he's actually right. They picked up Al Horford, they finished forty eight and thirty four, and they're gonna be great. You know, someone else will say it, someone else will say it. Snowball effect, guess what? Everyone's saying it now, except me, of course, because and Stephen A. Smith, I actually gained some respect for you. You said you don't think the um, Boston Celtics would be good, and I agree with your reason why. You know, so usually people don't think for themselves when it comes to sports, and that's the truth. People spew things out like, oh, six is better than three, if you guys know what I'm talking about in terms of rings with Jordan and LeBron. But did they, did they think of that, or did the media think of that? Because if you knew anything about basketball, rings is a team accomplishment. Anyway, back to the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics are the type of team that, They'll be decent in the regular season, but once the playoffs come, their true colors will show. This has happened so many times. I mean, if you want to go back to the recent era, the Toronto Raptors, Atlanta Hawks, a few years back, back in 08, 09, 10, the Utah Jazz. Well, the Utah Jazz actually had some star players in Darren Williams, Kyle Korver, Paul Millsap, Carlos Boozer, AK-47. You know what I'm saying? Andre, that's Andre Kurlianko, by the way. Um, so they actually, I, I'll take Utah off that list, but there's more. But anyway, so here's the thing. The reason why the Boston Celtics and no, there's no other team that can compete with the Cleveland Cavaliers except for two other teams, the New York Knicks and the Indiana Pacers. And I'll explain why. The New York Knicks, with the acquisition of Derrick Rose... Courtney Lee, Joe Kim Noah, Brandon Jennings. Keep in mind, the Knicks would have made the playoffs last year if they if they weren't 0 for 10 without Melo. And then they also have obviously our superstar in Carmelo Anthony, who people say I'm not. We this is not about the Knicks, so let me not. You know what I'm saying? So we got the Knicks have a good roster. They had the scoring. They have a superstar in Carmelo Anthony. They also have Derrick Rose who can put up all-star numbers. They have Kristaps Porzingis that will put up all-star numbers. They have Joe Kim Noah. You know what I mean? So there's that. Now the Indiana Pacers, they have Paul George that can put up, that puts up. Here's the thing with Paul George. He's incredibly inefficient in the regular season, but historically in the playoffs, he always plays extremely well. I mean, last year, yeah, there were times where it looked like he was playing a one-on-five and it was just dominating, right? Now, here's the thing. You need star power to be able to compete with championship contending teams because historically, a championship caliber team always has a superstar on that team. So you need star power. You need star power to compete. There is no doubt about it. There has not I don't think there's been one case in NBA history where a team won a championship with no star power. You need a combination of superstar power with the New York Knicks have superstar in Carmelo Anthony and then star power in Derrick Rose, maybe Porzingis. 
right? And then you have star power and Paul George, who puts up superstar numbers in the playoffs. I don't I don't think he's a superstar, but I'm saying in the playoffs, he puts up really good numbers. So you need that. So in terms of competing, the only team that can compete with the Cleveland Cavaliers are the Indiana Pacers, and they won't even be able to compete because offensively, they're a nightmare. They have no scores besides Paul George, who is inefficient. But then again, he's really good in the playoffs, so who knows. But for the most part, he's inefficient. He's an inefficient scorer. I think he shoots like 40% for his career. And then the New York Knicks with Carmelo Anthony and Derrick Rose. And even then, I don't think they'll be able to compete with the Cavaliers. And it's not because of Carmelo. Carmelo can do his thing with LeBron. Historically, we know what happens. But it's Kyrie. Kyrie freaking Irving entering his prime, doing what he did, averaging 27 last year. There's no no way Derrick Rose can compete with that, right? I'm sorry, Derrick Rose is good, but there's no way he's going to compete with 27 points per game. But the Boston Celtics, yeah, they picked up Al Horford, but Al Horford is one of the most overrated players of all time. He's incredibly unathletic. He doesn't have that great of a post game. Pretty much he's a pick and roll player. He can't catch lobs. He has a decent mid-range jump shot. You know what I mean? He's a great he's a decent defender. But what how are they gonna compete with the Cavaliers? Like some of these people saying the Boston Celtics are going to compete with the Cleveland How? Who the hell is go okay, they have some good defenders. Marcus Smart, Avery Bradley. What's the other dude's name? Um Oh, I can't remember his name. I apologize. They have Marcus Smart, Avery Bradley, some good defenders. But what does that mean? Good defenders? Let, let go back to through two years before. Pro, two years prior to 2014 NBA Finals. This is the best defender in NBA history, in my opinion. Well, at least one of the best. In Kawhi Leonard. But yet LeBron still puts up 28, 7, and 7, shooting 57% from the field and 51% from three. Now, obviously, Kawhi wasn't guarding him the majority of the time, but you get my point. You know what I mean? So, in terms of that, that's not going to stop him. Draymond Green couldn't stop him. Andre Iguodala couldn't stop him. Come on, man. If you need it, besides the fact that LeBron is just LeBron, you know, you need star power to be able to compete with champ. Let's look at it from a historical standpoint. 2016, LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love. Superstar and two All-Stars. 2015, Curry, Clay, Draymond. Superstar and two All-Stars. 2014, Tim Duncan, Kawhi, Tony, and Manu. Superstar and All-Stars. Or obviously, historical All-Stars, not really All-Stars that year. But Let's go back even further. 2013, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. 2012, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. 2011, Dirk Nowitzki with help from LeBron. <laughs> you see what I did there? 2010, Kobe and Powell. 2009, Kobe and Powell. 2008, Paul Pierce, KG, and Ray Allen. 2007, Tim Duncan. 2006, Dwayne Wade. You know what I mean? Like, when it comes to these things, you need star power. Historically, I don't think there has been any single team in NBA history to win an NBA championship without having a superstar. If you if you go back, like literally every single team I named had a superstar. You had LeBron, you had Curry, you had LeBron, you had LeBron, you, LeBron, Wade and Bosch, excuse me. Uh, what, 2011, you had Dirk Nowitzki. 2010, you had Kobe and Powell. 2009, you had Kobe and Powell. 2008, you had Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen. You know what I mean? Like, you can go even farther. 2007, you had Tim Duncan and Tony Parker won finals MVP. 2006, Dwayne Wade and Shaquille O'Neal. The list, you can keep going. You know, so historically, come on, man. These teams always appear like this. The Toronto Raptors, the Atlanta Hawks. And then what happens? In the playoffs to show that they're really not that good of players. And they're really not that good of a team. So that's my take on the Boston Celtics. They're incredibly overrated. I don't think... They'll. I don't even think they'll make it out of the first round, because let's say hypothetically, which I doubt will happen, they're a higher seed than the New York Knicks, the Indiana Pacers, right? Let's say, in terms of defense, the Indiana Pacers are one of the def the best defensive teams in the NBA, right? 
Now, the Knicks, they're really good defensively and they're really good offensively, right? Pacers struggle on offense. But the Boston Celtics don't have big scorers besides Isaiah Thomas. But if you want to compare Isaiah Thomas to Paul George, in my opinion, Paul George is at that borderline close to being a superstar, and Isaiah Thomas is just an all-star player. And in terms of playoff, you know, going off of what we've seen in the playoffs before, there's no doubt about it. Paul George will outscore him. And then defensively, Paul George, you have Paul George, Jeff Teague, you have Miles Turner, Thaddeus Young, Big Al. You know, I know Big Al's out of his prime, but I mean, he could still hold his own. You know what I mean? And then the New York Knicks, defensively, you have Courtney Lee, you have Derrick Rose, you know, Melo's an improved defender. You have Joe Kim Noah, you have Chris Stapps Porzingis, who's going to be one of the the runner-ups for the Defensive Player of the Year. You know what I mean? So, come on, man. Be realistic, dude. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. The Boston Celtics, irrelevant. I'm out. Peace. Come in, come in. I can see you by the fire. Listen.